At this point, we've factored a lot of trinomials that look like this. And there's one thing that all of these trinomials have in common. Can you see it? Right. There's no number in front of the first squared terms. If we generalized trinomials as ax squared plus bx plus c, then all of these trinomials would have an a of 1. We can see that their b's and c's can be all kinds of values, but these ones all have an a of 1. Now in this tutorial, we'll look at some cases where the a is not 1. And when factoring, we call these messy trinomials. We're going to see why messy trinomials is an appropriate name. Example 1. Factor 4x squared minus 21x plus 5. And we immediately see that this looks like a messy trinomial, in that there's a 4 in the a position out front here. And we stop and consider, could we factor this 4 out? Because that would make it easier. Well, neither 21 nor 5 are divisible by 4. So we can't factor out the 4. It's staying. It's definitely then a messy trinomial. So first, we know the result will be in the form of two sets of brackets. So let's start there. And our first method, we commonly call the trial and error method. Now, it's not purely trial and error, in that we don't start plugging all kinds of numbers into the brackets here. We do narrow it down first. And we do so by noting that the first terms in each set of bracket must multiply to give our 4x squared here. So what two terms could multiply to give 4x squared? Well, 2x times 2x would give 4x squared. So let's put that as a possibility here. But then we also think that 4x times 1x would also give 4x squared. So we should document that as a possibility as well. And next, we continue to narrow down by looking at the last or the constant term in this case the 5. And we know that the last terms in each set of these brackets must multiply to provide the 5. So we think, what two numbers multiply to give 5? Well, 1 times 5 or 5 times 1, and that would be it. So here are our options. And at this point, we just work through our options, determining which one could create the right middle term in our trinomial here. That is, negative 21x. The first terms are looked after. The last terms are looked after. So we just need to figure out what makes the right middle term. Now the middle terms are a result of adding these two multiplications. So can we make a negative 21x out of a 2x and a 10x? Well, we think for a moment, but can't think of any way to do that. Well. Because these first terms are the same as the previous ones, then switching the 5 and the 1 oh, didn't really change anything. So we'll move on to the next one. Can we make a negative 21x out of a 4x and a 5x? Well, we think. No, I can't think of any way to make that work. All right, on to the last option. Can we make a negative 21x out of a 20x and a 1x? And we think. Well, yeah, we could if they were both negative. We found a winner. Here's our factored solution. So did you like that trial and error method? Well, it can be quick if you guess right in the early stages of your trial and error, but it can also be kind of frustrating if you don't catch it early on. Now, here's a more procedural method that many students prefer. First step, write the equation out again with the first and the last term in place but a big space in the middle. And we want to split up the middle term into two terms. And of course, splitting up the middle term can be done many different ways. And really, as long as they add up to negative 21x, then it would be an appropriate split, right? I mean, it could be negative 10x and negative 11x. They add up to negative 21x. Or negative 15x and negative 6x. They add up to negative 21x, so anything that adds up to negative 21x would be an appropriate split. But for our method here, we have one more condition to zero in on the right split. 
the two terms that we split it up into must also multiply to get the same thing as if you took the first and the last term and multiplied them. Hmm, that's kind of tough to keep straight. So let's make a little table to keep track of this. So they need to multiply to the first term times the last term. So in our case, 4x squared times 5 equals 20x squared. And since we're splitting up the middle term, they must also add to negative 21x. So two conditions. So let's think about options. Start off with, what are the numbers that multiply to 20? Well, 4 and 5 multiply to 20. 20 and 1 multiply to 20. And 2 and 10 would also multiply to 20. So that covers all those options. So which of these would also add to be negative 21? Well, if we had these two numbers, the 20 and the 1, as negatives, then they would still multiply to plus 20, but they would add to negative 21. So we've got it. So we know that we'll split that middle term into negative 20x and negative 1x. Now, had we written it as negative 1x and negative 20x, uh, it's the same thing. It'll work out exactly the same. Let's just carry on with this one. The next step is to factor out the greatest common factor in the first set of terms, then do the same thing in the second set of terms. For the first pair, we can pull out a 4x, and that leaves us with x minus 5. And for the second pair, we can pull out a negative 1, and that leaves us with x minus 5. Hmm, and we know how to do group factoring, so let's pull out that x minus 5 to the front, and we're all done. It's factored. So we stop and consider. Well, how did it work out that we had that same factor, that is the x minus 5, in both of our terms at the end? Well, that's why we were so particular about how to split up those middle terms. That is, they had to add to negative 21x and multiply to 20. And if we do that right, we end up with a common factor we can pull out to the front. And if you get to the last step and you don't have a common factor, well, then it's a good time to look back and see if you might have messed something up. So that's the procedural method for messy trinomials. True, it is a bit confusing for the first few times you use it. But once you get some practice, it'll get much easier. Lots of practice is key. In this tutorial, we looked at factoring messy trinomials, and we call them messy in that they are definitely a bit messier than other factoring problems. We recognize a messy trinomial as one with a number out front here. That is, the a is not equal to 1. And we consider two methods for solving messy trinomials. First, a trial and error method. And second, a more procedural method. Which one is better? Well, let's consider. The trial and error method can sometimes be faster, but it depends a lot on whether you try the right answer early on in your trials, which is bonus, or if it's later on in your trials, it can be frustrating. I know that most students prefer the second, that is the more procedural method. If you follow through the steps carefully, you know that you'll come up with a result in a reasonable number of steps. Now both methods take some thinking. It's still messy but practice is really the key for both of them. 